All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so uh, my name is David Fagers from Ascent Construction. The uh, purpose of our meeting today is to discuss uh, the Willamette Water Supply Project, the water treatment plant, and specifically the wire strand wrapped pre-stressed concrete tank. Um, that particular scope of work, uh, the clear well uh, on our water treatment plant is what we're going to focus on today. Um, just a quick housekeeping item. Um, it looks like everyone's on mute, but just want to reiterate, uh, please keep your line on mute. Um, and don't do any video feed, just so that we save the bandwidth um, so that uh, all the audio comes in clear. All right, so quick introduction. Again, my name is David Fagerstrom. I'm a Sunt Construction Senior Project Manager for this project. Um, with me today is Jared Wagner, uh, one of our project managers. Um, and then also representing the uh, program is uh, Matthew Gerbens. Um, we've got our contact information up here on the screen, um, but we will also type in our contact information in the chat so that you can uh, pull that off of there. Uh, I've already put mine in. Um, and then I guess we ask that you guys put your contact information into the chat as well um, so that we can pull your contact information there and uh, uh, make sure we've got that uh, for future communications. Um, feel free to also send us an email during this meeting or after this meeting uh, if you'd like. All right, so quick introduction of uh, who Sunt Construction is. Um, so Sunt Construction is a, is a national uh, general contractor. Our headquarters are in Tempe, Arizona. Um, we were founded in 1890 and we are a 100% employee owned company. Um, looking at the map of the U.S. here, um, the uh, red and gray states are um, uh, states where we have done work in, and so you can see it covers pretty much the entire U.S., with the exception of a few states. And then the red states are um, where we currently do, uh, uh, primarily do most of our work today. Um, the black dots represent um, our regional offices. Uh, so you can see that we pretty much had go from Texas west uh, through the west southwest and the west coast. Uh, a little bit more about Sunt. Um, as I said, we are a national general contractor. We have multiple divisions within Sunt. Uh, we have a building division that does your typical vertical construction type projects. We have a transportation division uh, that focuses on your horizontal work, your roads and bridges and other types of infrastructure like that. Uh, then we have the industrial division. Um, that's the group that Jared and I work with. And our industrial division uh, focuses uh, entirely on uh, water and wastewater projects, uh, both public and private. And then we've also got a concrete division um, that self-performs concrete and supports the, uh, the other three business groups. So quick agenda for today, um, we're going to cover a handful of topics here, um, start off with a safety share, uh, then go into kind of the overall project, uh, look at the project schedule, uh, and then the bidding requirements, and then get, some, get into some of the specifics of the uh, pre-stressed reservoir um, with the seismic design requirements, the, the deferred design requirements, and then some other uh, specifics associated with the tank, and then we'll open it up to questions at the end. So starting with a safety share, um, safety is a uh, very important core value of SUNT. Uh, so we start out all of our meetings like this with a safety share. Um, and uh, the item that we have here is talking about innovative PPE. And we've carried this same safety share through all of these public outreach meetings because uh, we think this is uh, where the construction industry is going. Um, SUNT has recently implemented the use of hard hats with chin straps. And the reason for that is to protect uh, our employees in the event of a fall. Um, 
what we, what we've found is that uh, when an employee, when there is a potential for a fall, um, if you're not using a uh, chin strap on your hard hat, your hard hat's going to go flying off, and when you fall and you land or hit something adjacent, you no longer have your hard hat, and that's where the significant injuries happen. Um, so SUNT is uh, uh, implementing the use of hard hats with chin straps, and there's multiple versions of that. Um, in the picture here on the left, you can see that's your uh, what we're calling the rock climber type of hard hat. Um, it's all integral. Um, you can get an attachment to have that uh, uh, safety shield on the front of it, uh, or, or the, uh, the other two hard hats, the middle one and the one on the right. Those are your typical hard hats that you see on the job. Um, you can buy those with the suspension system that have the chin strap, or I think you can uh, get an add-on to add that to your existing hard hat and suspension system. Uh, this is required of all SUNT employees on all of our job sites. Um, we currently are not asking our or requiring our subs to use them, but uh, we would strongly encourage it as we think this is the way the industry is going. All right, so quick overview of the project. Um, just hitting the program highlights here. So again, this uh, the uh, the water treatment is part of the Willamette Water Supply Commission, and that is made up of the Tualatin Valley Water District, the City of Hillsboro, and the City of Beaverton. Uh, when you add up all the various projects, the, the total approximated cost is about $1.3 billion. And all the various projects include a raw water facility uh, down in the Wilsonville area. Um, which is down here and pulls water off of the Willamette River. Um, then a raw water transmission line up to the water treatment plant, which is the project that SUNT has. Uh, then continuing on with uh, finished water transmission lines through the city uh, and also the uh, reservoir storage site. The water treatment plant is being delivered through the CMGC delivery method. Uh, which basically means that SUNT was brought on early uh, to work with the owner and the engineer uh, as we go through the various design levels to offer um, cost, cost estimates at, at different design levels and input into constructability and value engineering to help optimize the project. Uh, zooming in a little bit closer on the project, uh, the project location. Um, we're going to be right here uh, in this square on the southwest corner of Tualatin Sherwood Boulevard and southwest 124th Street. Um, this here is just to overlay uh, the treatment plant sitting in this heavily wooded site. A um, couple, couple of things to note about the chosen site location um, is it's uh, uh, pretty much a, just a large outcropping of uh, basalt uh, bedrock. Um, excavation is not part of the clear well scope, um, but what this means is all the excavations are going to be drilled and blasted, um, and so lots of crushing and processing of that rock material. Um, again, it's a, a greenfield site, heavily wooded right now. Um, in terms of uh, permitting agencies and the authorities having jurisdiction, um, there's quite a few that we're going to be working with. Uh, Oregon DEQ, Washington County, City of Sherwood, Tualatin Valley, um, and there's even a few more not listed. Um, looking at the overall site again, just wanted to highlight some of the, the major project stats. Uh, total site layout covers about 23 acres. Um, various treatment processes, um, all the ones you would typically see at a water treatment plant. Uh, aside from the process systems, we've got a administration building that's in the neighborhood of 15,000 square feet. Um, just like any other water treatment plant, there's a lot of concrete work. Uh, there's about 40,000 yards of concrete, uh, a lot of earthwork. I mentioned the uh, basalt and the drilling and blasting. Um, the site isn't very level right now, uh, so we got about 65,000 yards of cut and fills, about 180,000 yards of structural X, and about 120,000 yards of pipe excavation. Uh, 
being that this is a large water treatment plant, you've got a lot of yard piping running throughout the site, um, going all the way up to 84 inch diameter. Uh, process equipment, um, there's about $20 million worth of process equipment to purchase and install. Uh, the pre-stressed reservoir uh, that we're talking about today is a 10 million gallon uh, tank, concrete tank, that's up here in the, in the northeast corner. Uh, multiple pre-engineered buildings, um, and what this means is there's a lot of uh, building trade opportunities um, for local subcontractors. Uh, I guess zooming in uh, a little bit more, um, this is the uh, main process building. Um, this is pretty much where all the treatment process takes place. Um, the raw water will come in through a, a underground pipeline along this side of the facility, across under the structure into this area 22, which is the ballasted slot. Um, water will, will go through there for settlement, then over to the ozone generator and contactors, and then is filtered over here, which this is the northwest corner of the process facility. It's our uh, filter facility. And then in here, uh, this covered building, area 30, is our UV disinfection. Uh, from here, water um, is sent underground up north over to a splitter structure and then to the clear well. Um, also within this building is our uh, main chemical facility and then back here on the end is the administration building that I mentioned was about 15,000 square feet. Uh, one of the other process areas or areas of the plant um, is the uh, EQ overflow, the finished water and the clear well. Um, this is on the north side of the plant, northeast side of the plant. Um, this open concrete basin right here is the EQ overflow. Um, this is where any off-spec water is sent um, prior to being recirculated into the plant. Um, here's the clear well, uh, again the 10 million gallon reservoir. On the back side of that is the finished water pump station. This houses the uh, large volume vertical turbine pumps that ultimately send the water out to the distribution system. Uh, this picture over here on the right is just a view looking from the opposite direction. Uh, this is basically standing uh, right at about 124th Street looking southwest into the plant. Last part of the treatment process is the uh, solids handling. Um, that's where any uh, uh, settled solids or separated solids from the water uh, go to be dewatered, to be processed and dewatered. Um, part of this process is the uh, uh, gravity thickeners, which is basically two circular clarifier tanks. Uh, you got a thickened sludge pump station that sends the water to the sludge holding. And then finally, um, the dewatering facility where um, any remaining water within the solids is separated uh, before the solid is hauled off. So that's an overview of the, of the project. Uh, we just wanted to touch on the schedule real quick. Um, so we've got a very basic uh, Excel bar chart type or graph schedule. Um, the construction will start beginning of next year. Uh, we'll get NTP in February of 2022. Um, from there, it'll start, you know, your typical early submittals, getting mobilized, um, and then moving into the site work, the site clearing, and the earthwork. Uh, the thing that I wanted to highlight uh, for the schedule today, for, for today's discussion, is the clearwell construction. Um, the clearwell is one of the first uh, areas that we're going to get started on um, with uh, building the structure and right now we're anticipating that's about August of next year um, and going through all the way through including backfill and everything associated with it um, basically the beginning of 2024. Next we want to look at the bid schedule and, and bid opportunities for the project. Um, so we have the job divided up into multiple uh, GMPs, uh, two GMPs. Uh, the first one uh, we'll advertise uh, here in a few weeks on September 24th. Uh, a couple weeks later on October 6th, we'll have the pre-bid meeting. Uh, RFI deadline cutoff for questions will be October 21st. 
that will give us time to finalize uh, responses to those questions and issue the final agenda on October 29th. And bids will be due November 4th. Um, and the pre-stressed reservoir is included in GMP-1. Uh, GMP-2 um, is uh, basically your site finishes type work, uh, which won't happen until the very end of the project. So we were going to bid those, start that bid process closer to that when that work will start in April of 2023. Uh, we got the note here in red. Um, uh, for anyone that uh, joined us on the very first meeting that we had, you may remember that we had uh, three GMPs uh, listed out, uh, but through development of the project and uh, kind of optimizing the bid process, GMPs one and two were combined. Um, so now we're just down to GMP one and two. Project delivery. Um, this is just an overview for the whole delivery of the of the GMP process or the, or the water treatment plant. Um, again, multiple uh, GMPs uh, with the uh, intricate scopes on the project, the various work categories. We're anticipating well over 70 uh, bid packages. Um, each bid package is going to have a defined scope of work, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, most all bid packages are a, a low competitive, uh, most responsive type of uh, uh, selection. Uh, there are a couple um, that are best value, uh, and we'll get we'll talk specifically about the clear well or the pre-stressed reservoir a little bit later. Um, so this graph right here, uh, we just wanted to give you kind of an idea of, of the breakdown of the uh, budgeted costs, I guess, for each of the various uh, work categories. And you can see in the red box, we've got the uh, strand wrap pre-stressed concrete tank. Um, you know, this is a 10 million gallon reservoir. Um, so the, the cost of this is, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of the uh, 11 million range, just, you know, obviously depending on market factors and, and other conditions. Um, but just to give you an idea of, of, of the magnitude of this uh, bid package. Uh, again, uh, this graph right here, this table, is really just kind of defining more of the selection for the, the pre-stressed reservoir. Again, this is in GMP-1. Um, the procurement type is uh, will be a subcontract, and we wanted to highlight that because when we issue the, the bid packages or the instructions to bidders, you're going to see sample documents, and we have included uh, SUNT's sample subcontract and sample purchase order. Um, but again, this will be contracted utilizing SUNT's uh, standard subcontract. All right, instructions to bidders. Yep. Uh, Gerald, take it from here. All right, thanks, Dave. All right, so uh, instructions to bidders, components of a bid package. So whenever I, this project, this GMP will advertise on September 24th. This is our, these are the things that are gonna be included in that package whenever they come in, uh, whenever you see it on the 24th. So invitations, instructions to bidders, I'll cover here a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, you'll see a detailed scope of work. Um, all of the scopes of work for all the work category packages in this GMP are gonna be available for you to take a look at. Those are gonna have the inclusions and exclusions in coordination with the rest of the scopes of work. Uh, in GMP-1, so you'll be able to see uh, how other trades are going to be interfacing with your work. Uh, the bid forms, so for every one of the work packages, there's a unique bid form uh, that we'll have uh, to get filled out that will allow us to do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison for everybody uh, whenever it comes time to review the bids, uh, as well as a couple of sections on acknowledgement and experience uh, for the project. Uh, Exhibits and attachments, I'll cover those in a little bit more detail. Uh, we'll have a detailed construction schedule that you can base your bid on as well that'll be included as part of the bid package. Uh, drawings and specs, uh, the geotech report for the site, and some other supplemental information. So uh, SUNT is gonna be putting in some uh, temporary utilities uh, and hoisting and uh, indicate locations of trailers, lay down yards, uh, and stockpile sites. All that information will be available 
uh, for you to take a look at on the 24th to begin your bid process. Uh, within the instructions to bidders, so this is our uh, our playbook for putting together your bid. Uh, so it's going to have every the step-by-step -step instructions for everything that needs to go in there, uh, bidding requirements and procedures, all the things that need to be uh, part of the bid and uh, for you to have considered as you're putting your bid together uh, to go through, including uh, uh, substitutions, how we want to handle those, uh, bidding requirements. Some does require uh, pre-qualification. It's uh, a couple uh, financial and safety pre-qualification steps. Um, that information is available uh, on the instructions to bidders as well as the website, um, the ourreliablewater.org website will have SUNT's pre-qualification link if you want to get started on that now um, so that you don't have to worry about it once you start the bid process. Uh, it also has some information on project requirements and procedures. And the one that I really want to highlight here right now is the WIFIA requirements. The project is receiving some federal funding uh, from a program uh, called WIFIA. And what that means for you is that it's going to have two components to it that are relative uh, to our discussion. The first is the American Iron and Steel Act. Um, so it's a requirement that major uh, steel and iron components on the project be sourced from an American source uh, and have certifying documentation that comes with it. And the other component of it is the labor rates. So we'll, we'll be having prevailing wage as well as bully, and uh, we'll need to make sure that we're paying the workers the higher of the two uh, between bully and prevailing wage. Um, instruction submitters also contains the in, uh, information on insurance, warranty, and uh, bidding documents. Uh, the exhibits and attachments that are going to be included, uh, uh, that are going to be uploaded for you to take a look at, that we'll need to consider as part of the bid are listed here. If you want to get more detail on these, our first uh, public outreach meeting on GMP1 went into each one of these exhibits in detail and really described what's included in each one. Uh, for now, uh, I'll just tell you that the attachments are things that are only going to be relevant to the bid phase. Uh, and anything that's listed as an exhibit will ultimately become an exhibit on the uh, subcontract agreement once that's awarded and issued out. Um, so that's kind of the delineating factor between an attachment and an exhibit. One of the aims of the uh, operational goals of the program is in the event of a major seismic event on the site, um, that the plant is capable of returning to operations of 50% capacity within 24 hours of the event. Um, so with that, the engineers added a couple seismic design requirements um, uh, for the project. Uh, that spec section 018829 lists those requirements. Um, the spec section for the pre-stressed uh, wire tank, the clear well tank, uh, further clarify some of those seismic performance requirements on what's needed specifically for that tank. Um, the, the section includes a whole bunch of stuff uh, relative to the architectural, fire suppression, mechanical, and non-structural systems. Um, those need to be um, constructed to meet the seismic demands that are laid out in that specification. Uh, and there's three ways to verify or receive qualification that they have achieved that seismic performance. Uh, that the engineer is going to allow on this one. Those three methods are through analysis, testing, and experience. So by analysis, uh, that's the engineering calculations that will prove out that the component is capable of withstanding that seismic event. Uh, by testing, uh, that's actually taking a um, the exact component that will be installed on the job or a, a duplicate of it and putting it on a shake table uh, and testing it under those seismic conditions. Uh, and the last is experience. So that same object that would be installed on the project, having um, survived a seismic event of equivalent size and having the certification that says, yeah, this thing has been in an earthquake of this size and made it through and is still functioning. Um, those are the three qualification methods that uh, the engineers allowed for, for the project for any of those components. Uh, deferred design requirements. So the uh, clear well tank as a whole is a deferred design, uh, the strand wrap tree stress concrete tank. Um, by deferred design, we mean uh, stamped and sealed by a professional engineer licensed in the state of Oregon. There's a number of other 
uh, delegated designs and deferred designs on the project that um, are adjacent to the work. So there's some uh, ladders and platforms, some of the temporary electrical uh, and the electrical system, some of the mechanical systems that are going to connect in. All of those are going to be uh, deferred design components. Uh, with the pre-stressed concrete tank, the uh, um, DN Tanks is on the phone call with us today, uh, and they're, uh, they've helped assist with some of those deferred design items as well. Okay. Um, that's kind of been a general overview of, uh, you know, the project uh, and the scope and where we're at uh, with the bidding process and some of the requirements. Um, now we just wanted to take a couple minutes to look at some of the uh, specific details related to the pre-stressed reservoir. Um, and so I've got a bullet list here, and these are components that um, we pulled directly from the specifications. Um, so I'm sure you guys all know there's multiple types of uh, 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 pre-stressed reservoirs. Uh, one for this project is a D110 Type 1 tank. Um, this tank is being used for uh, potable water storage, so it's important to note uh, the NSS61 approval requirement for uh, any products in contact uh, with the water. When it comes to constructing the uh, reservoir, the clear well, uh, the spec requires um, some particular qualifications uh, that I've got listed here. Um, the tank builder needs to have 10 years of experience in design and construction of D110 Type 1 tanks. Um, ten, those 10 uh, need to be within the last 10 years, and five of which need to be located within a region with um, specific seismic um, requirements um, that have been in service for at least five years. Um, so when considering your qualifications and bidding the project, uh, we ask that you take a special note of that and our uh, bid submittal requirements are going to require you to provide uh, verification of these qualifications with your bid. Uh, in addition to uh, those requirements, um, your foreman uh, supervising the shop placement needs to have at least three years of experience as a nozzleman. And again, on qualifications, just advise you that when you do get the specs to just make note of all the qualification requirements listed there. Uh, the clear well will have a five-year warranty. Uh, concrete for the clear well will be per the concrete spec 03300. Um, we highlight that here because we want you to, to make note of the testing requirements, uh, uh, trial batch requirements um, required of the concrete spec. Uh, you'll also be required to do the leak testing and disinfection of the reservoir of the clear well. And then lastly, the American Iron and Steel that Jared just mentioned a second ago. Um, so that applies on the project. Um, diving in a little bit further, looking at some of the details. Um, the images here, the screenshots we have here is a plan view of the clear well. Uh, again, it's a 10 million gallon reservoir. Uh, puts us at about a 245-foot diameter. Um, it's mostly buried, um, but the thing that I wanted to highlight here on the plan view is uh, you've got, we've got 84-inch inlet and outlet pipe um, that uh, come in uh, under the tank, under the slab, and into these cast-in-place um, boxes. Here's your inlet, here's your outlet. Um, and this is the detail uh, showing what those uh, boxes look like. Um, as we mentioned, the tank is a deferred design, um, so the tank builder will be completing the design. Um, portions of this box will have been designed by the engineer of record. Um, right now we're working through some of those details. Um, if you were to look at the drawings right now, um, some of
some of the reinforcing is not called out, but we're going to plan to have that clarified um, and incorporated in the design so that when you get the documents, you have a clear understanding of where your design uh, uh, starts and the engineer of records design starts or stops. Um, in addition, um, we've got some uh, baffle walls uh, inside the clear well. Um, it's just not it's not just an open reservoir with columns. Um, there are some straight cast in place concrete baffle walls that will be constructed as part of this. Uh, looking at a section cut of the clear well, uh, I mentioned that it's about a 245 foot diameter tank and mostly buried. Um, you can see a portion of it is sticking up out of the ground. Um, but this is a, a pretty typical uh, reservoir of this type. Um, you've got a uh, you know expanded footing around the perimeter where your uh, perimeter wall, your core wall sits. Um, You've got uh, like some keyways uh, where your like column footings rest, which are above the slab, uh, several columns. Um, you've got some drop panels up at each of the columns uh, tied into the roof deck. Uh, but again, uh, this is a deferred design. So when you see these drawings, you're going to see that, you know, none of the reinforcing is called out uh, on our drawings. Uh, that will all be part of uh, your deferred design. Uh, in addition to you know just the the sheer concrete work, um, there are some accessories that are um, included in the uh, in this spec, this Division 43 spec. Um, items such as ladders, hatches, uh, guardrails, and ventilators. Um, so those items um, will be expected to be included in your scope. Uh, last item uh, to discuss uh, specifically with the reservoir is um, some of the site logistical challenges. Um, the, the Clearwell sits up here in the northeast corner of the site right off of 124th Street. Uh, to the south side, we've got the uh, finished water pump station, which this dashed line in here is kind of the wet well for the pump station. So this is also a deep excavation right next to the clear well. Um, so we've, we've noted some uh, logistical challenges and some safety challenges associated with this. So the edge of the clear well is going to be about 60 to 70, with closer to 70 feet from southwest 124th Street. So the expectation is that um, during pre-stressing that uh, the tank builder um, includes uh, some sort of protection baffle along the east side here um, to protect the general public. And then um, we're going to ask in our scope that the pre-stressing, uh, pre-stress strand wrapping occur uh, at night. Um, that will prevent, um, you know, other crews, other um, trades uh, working in the area um, while you are well, while you're directly wrapping the tank with the pre-stressing wires. So that's all the specifics we had today on the clear well. Um, we just wanted to highlight uh, again uh, these webinars that we are doing. Um, we started back at end of July uh, with our general meeting, and since then we have been covering. Uh, specific trades or scopes of work each week. Uh, each of these meetings, the audio has been recorded and we posted the links to the website here. So if you wanted to see any of the previous meetings, you can just go to the R Reliable website, the Water Treatment Plant Procurement. Uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page and you can see the links to those meetings. Um, and if you felt the need to, to participate in any future meetings, you can see what those dates are and the topics that we'll be covering. So that's all we had for our presentation today. I um, know we had an hour and a half, but with this being uh, just one scope that we we're covering, uh, kept it short and sweet. Um, we're happy to take any questions that you have. Um, if you have any, feel free to unmute your line and ask, or if you'd rather type them into the chat, 
uh, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Um, and then even feel free to uh, email us uh, uh, after the meeting uh, as you think of something. Um, we'll do our best to respond uh, as quick as we can um, and get you the answers to those questions. I have a couple questions. This is sure. Go ahead. This is Mike with Ward Henshaw. Um, couldn't tell from the detail, but on those baffle walls, do those baffle walls connect to the roof? Uh, I don't think that they did. What's the what's your concern there? That well, because if it, if they do connect to the roof, you're not going to want to wrap. You're gonna you're not going to want to wrap the walls after they're poured to the roof. So if they are, then we got some logistical sequencing of possibly having to wrap the tank before the roof is poured. Yeah, I didn't think that they were. Um, that's something that we can look at uh, after the meeting. We get some. Uh, Look back into the drawings, Mike, and um, we can follow up with you on that. Um, and uh, if there's an issue that we need to address there, we can address that with the engineer of record and uh, DN tanks. Okay. And then the second question was the bid package comes out in a few weeks and you're bidding on the 4th, but construction won't be till like August next year. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, bids will be due November 4th. Um, once we get through all the approvals with uh, uh, the program, you know, their their management committee meetings, which is like a, a typical council type meeting, um, we'll get NTP uh, first part of next year. And then we've got a decent amount of work to get the site cleared and prepped and get the excavation done. Um, but we are starting with the Clearwell excavation uh, to get that part of the project going first. Okay, so are you going to want the tank contractor to hold their GMP all the way from November to August? Yeah, so we're going to, um, you know, the bids will be due November 4th. Um, and then we're going to start, we're going to be, as soon as we get approval uh, on the GMP from the owner, um, we'll be issuing contracts, so um, as soon as that is done, you'll be able to uh, utilize that to start locking in your vendor pricing. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're doing our best to shorten that period. Uh, we understand the, the market that we're dealing in today. Um, we recognize that as a challenge and, and have made that a focal point. All right, that's all I got. Thank you. Yep, not follow up on those walls. Okay, uh, if there's no more questions, uh, again, appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, join us today. Um, feel free to reach out. Um, I think we've spoken to most of you guys individually to keep you abreast of the schedule and the project, um, and we'll continue to do that. And you'll see um, an official advertisement here pretty soon about the project and access to the documents. So again, thank you guys for your time. We appreciate it.